Uhuru comrades, and welcome to today's Omali Taught Me Sunday study webinar, where we'll be continuing the discussion around the Russia-Ukraine struggle as part of negating the colonial capitalist narrative being spread to paint Russia as the aggressor and exposing the US and other European imperialist powers role as the instigator and orchestrator of this conflict. This week, Chairman Amalia Shetela will be joined by Secretary General of the African Socialist International, Louise Kinshasa, an ASI Africa Regional Director of Organization to Fari Mugheri, as well as Alexander Ayanov, President of the Anti-Globalization Movement of Russia. Before we continue, we ask that you take a moment to like and share this video and tag someone you know to join this discussion. It is no secret that white power is working overtime to shut down any form of communication from Russia to parts of the world, which means that most of the propaganda churned out by the colonial capitalists goes uncontested. We want you to join our efforts in getting out the revolutionary analysis of African internationalism, the only theory that has properly summed up the basis for this struggle we see unfolding. Make sure to also donate to the show that's making this discussion possible at paypal.me slash Omali Taught Me. We have President Ayanov on with us live from Russia for the African world to be able to hear what's going on. They are attempting to make the colonial capitalist narrative the only one that can be heard around the world. But we are extending our platform for these comrades to be able to relate to us what is actually going on. We'll start this discussion off with the official position of the African Socialist International regarding Russia and Ukraine and turn it over to President Ayanov, who will respond and speak on behalf of Russia. The African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Amalia Shetela along with the leaders of Venezuela, China, Iran, Cuba, and Nicaragua, have spoken in opposition to the US imperialist created crisis in Ukraine and in solidarity with the people of Russia and their elected government and leadership. On Thursday, February 24th, the foreign ministry of the Bol Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela issued a statement expressing its worry over the worsening of the crisis in Ukraine and lamenting the mockery and violation of the Minsk Accords on the part of NATO encouraged by the United States of America. This current military situation in Ukraine was fomented by years of NATO encroachments, US CIA coups, color revolutions, slanders and US sanctions designed to starve the Russian people since the fall of the USSR, something engineered by the US during the 1980s with the US backed coup in Afghanistan on the Soviet border that overthrew a progressive government and president of Afghanistan that had a relationship with the USSR. The New York Times is reporting that today up to 95% of the people of Afghanistan are starving and babies are rapidly dying following the 20 year occupation of the country by the US colonial military. Since 1991, the US has worked to contain Russia. According to one online source, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, the NATO military alliance has extended its borders 800 miles to the east, incorporating Poland. 
Hungary, Czechia, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, and North Macedonia. In 2021, NATO officially recognized Ukraine itself as an aspiring member, and Sweden and Finland are also considering joining the anti-Russia alliance. Both Finland and Estonia are less than 200 kilometers, 125 miles, from St. Petersburg, and Ukraine's eastern border is less than 750 kilometers, 460 miles, from Moscow. Putin's demands include a commitment from Ukraine to abstain from joining NATO. NATO was created to contain and attack Russia. The situation in Ukraine today also follows the wave of U.S.-backed color revolutions throughout the territories that have been part of the former Soviet Union, including the Rose Revolution in Georgia in 2003, the Orange Revolution in Ukraine in 2004, the Tulip Revolution in Kyrgyzstan in 2005, or the Arab Spring in Asia and Africa in 2011, among many other counterinsurgencies against anti-colonial movements and struggles for independence around the world and inside the U.S as part of what Chairman Amalia Shetela has termed the colonial mode of production. The US bourgeois media paints the narrative that Biden, the US and their partners are the champions of democracy while slanderously depicting the Russians as the aggressors. This lie is meant to obscure the fact that it is US imperialism built and sustained by the enslavement and oppression of African people and theft of our resources, which has been responsible for the violence in Ukraine over the past eight years or more. A US-backed coup ousted the democratically elected president in Ukraine in 2014. This CIA coup in 2014 paved the way for the ascendancy of the reactionary white nationalist government of Vladimir Zelensky, former professional comedian. Zelensky is tied to the paramilitary anti-Russian pro-US Svoboda party. He has also expressed ambitions for Ukraine to join NATO. US and Europe are denouncing Russian troop movements, meanwhile funneling billions of dollars and arms into Ukraine, on top of more than 150 military advisors, including special ops forces. Since the 2014 coup, US-backed Ukrainian military forces have slaughtered over 14,000 people in the Donbass region of Eastern Ukraine, where the majority of the residents support and identify with Russia. As one online article stated, Ukraine has already been massively weaponized by the United States since the CIA-backed coup d'etat in Kyiv in 2014, brought to power a neo-Nazi regime obsessed with antagonizing Russia. The Biden administration has boosted inventories for anti-tank missiles and other lethal weaponry with plans for further increases. Now, it emerges that additional supplies are on the way from the US and Britain. Britain is to send anti-tank weapons to Ukraine along with military advisors. The same US imperialism that was built on slavery genocide and colonialism is now posturing as the moral and political authority of the world. The U.S. colonial capitalist state murders African people inside the U.S. every single day, including George Floyd, Amir Locke, Breonna Taylor, and millions of others. It is the same state that occupies and wages genocidal mass murder and terror throughout the world, such as Libya, in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Palestine, Somalia, Haiti, Congo, and Yemen. Only Chairman Amalia Shetela and the theory of African internationalism can make sense of the situation today and show the way forward under the leadership of the African revolution. It is only the profound analysis of the world and world economy that Chairman has termed colonialism as the mode of production that we can begin to understand the dialectical relationship that connects all events in the world within the colonial mode of production built on the enslavement and colonial domination of African and oppressed peoples. As Chairman Amalia Shetela has stated, the oppressive conditions faced by Africa, Africans, and the majority of the peoples of the world are globally connected to the experience of affluence and power by the white population that is dependent on a pedestal of colonial domination. African internationalism connects the current political and economic configuration of the world to the colonial enslavement of Africa and African people. It proves that capitalism emerges as a parasitic world economy born at the expense of Africa, Africans, and all the world's peoples who are subjected to foreign and alien colonial rule up to this date. Death to colonial capitalism forward the international African revolution. So it's my honor now to welcome the leader of the African nation and worldwide African revolution, Chairman Amalia Shetela, and President Alexander Ayanov, live from Russia. Uhuru, President Ayanov. 
So we want to begin with an initial message um, from President Ayanov that you want to relay to our audience today about the situation with Russia and Ukraine from the position of Russia. So Huru, Comrade Alex. Uhuru, comrades. Uh, my name is Alexander Ivanov from Moscow. I'm the human rights activist and the president of the anti-globalization movement of uh, Russia. Now we see the Western propaganda around to the war about situation to Ukraine. And sorry, the next of my speech, I am speak the Russian language uh, and uh, have my translator to translate my speech for you or the auditory, but I really appreciate it for this uh, moment and I can speak to the freedom of people around the world. Now I uh, speak with you about the true situation in Ukraine and the true situation about the Russian operation to the, this territory. Я хотел бы обратиться сейчас ко всем свободным людям и сказать, что западная пропаганда вольет и называет Россию страной агрессором, которая якобы вторглась на территорию соседнего государства. Но это не так. И вот почему. I would like to address uh, the free people around the world uh, to tell you that uh, Western propaganda is lying. Uh, when they say that uh, Russia has invaded uh, Ukraine. And uh, let me tell you why. Period. In 2014, the President of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych, а вынужден бежать а, в Россию, так как националисты, фашисты и люди, которые поддерживают бандеровские движения, а, выходят на Майдан вместе а, за руки с европейскими и американскими политиками. In 2014, uh, legally elected uh, president of Ukraine, um, Viktor Yanukovych, is forced to flee Ukraine, uh, while... Um, while it is being filled uh, by nationalists, uh, fascists, uh, marching along with European politics, politicians. Соединенные Штаты выделяют по несколько миллионов долларов в день на то, чтобы революционеры, так называемые псевдореволюционеры, националисты, находились на площади независимости на Украине. Uh, и uh, продолжали свои деструктивные действия, закидывали коктейлями Молотова полицию и открывали огонь по мирному населению из стрелкового оружия. Uh, during that time, United States was paying a uh, few million dollars per day uh, for uh, these ultra-nationalists uh, to throw Molotov cocktails into, on the police and to shoot innocent people uh, making riot uh, in the streets of Ukraine. Но переворот все-таки состоялся. Президент Украины сбежал в Россию, и власть на Украине заняли ультранационалисты. But uh, could it uh, happened, and uh, president was forced to flee to Russia, and uh, the power went to ultra-nationalists. Uh, you can see so many videos on YouTube uh, and remember what really happened in 2014. After that, we witnessed two very important events uh, that uh, forced separation of uh, two um, pieces from Ukraine, two republics. Откровенный фашист Толчинов издает приказ на всей территории России, отменяющий русский язык как второй государственный, хотя на нем говорят более 30 миллионов человек в этой стране. Uh, uh, 
fascist Turchinov uh, has made an official order uh, declared that it's illegal uh, to use Russian language. Nevertheless, there are over uh, 30 million people speaking Russian in that country. Да, сейчас случается еще более трагическое событие. Коммунистические и социалистические партии, левые движения выходят на митинги в Одессе с требованием остановить фашистскую оккупацию на Украине. Но националистические батальоны, которые находятся и дислоцированы в Одессе, загоняют этих людей в дом профсоюзов и сжигают их заживо. Uh, and then we witness um, even more tragic events uh, when communists and leftists uh, uh, went to the streets, uh, the streets of Odessa uh, to protest against this capture of power, and they are forced into this uh, building um, by ultranationalists and burned alive there. Естественно, люди, которые живут э, э, на территории, граничащих с Россией, понимают, что им не по пути с э, такой властью, с властью нацистов, с властью э, теми людей, с которыми их деды, их отцы э, воевали во время э, Великой Отечественной войны. Of course, it's uh, too much hard for people who live there and who witnessed uh, and who know how their father, their grandfather fought uh, uh, fascism, uh, fought against, against Nazis before, and nowadays they see these Nazis are in power and uh, they do whatever they please. They decide to take power under control and declare their independence. Более 90% процентов проживающих на территории Луганской и Донецкой народных республик решают отсоединиться от Украины и стать независимыми государствами. So the people of Donetsk and Lugansk republics, uh, over 90% of the population decide to uh, separate themselves from this country who is, uh, well, controlled by fascists. При этом в западных частях Украины и в самом Киеве проходят марши ветеранов войск СС, которые воевали бок о бок с фашистами во время Великой Отечественной войны, во время Второй мировой войны. И им действующая киевская преступная власть содействует в всех их политических и общественных амбициях. At the same time, uh, we witness uh, these marches of uh, uh, SS um, warriors, uh, veterans. Um, well, there are demonstrations all over Kiev and East Ukraine, and they are in support of uh, those people who were fighting uh, with uh, Nazi Germany against, uh, against coalition against Russians. И а, дальше а, фашист Турчинов объявляет а, донецких и а, луганских а, ополченцев а, террористами и начинает против них широкомасштабную войну с применением всех видов вооружений. Next, this fascist Turchinov uh, declares a war on these two republics and uses all kinds of weaponry against them. В первую неделю погибает более двух тысяч человек. In first week, over, over uh, two thousand people died. Каких людей? Именно мирному населению. Uh, all of them uh, peaceful population. И ни одна из европейских стран, ни один из американских политиков не сделал ни одного заявления в отношении киевской власти, потому что люди, которые занимались преступлениями против человечности там в это время были ставленниками американских политиков. And uh, not one uh, European country said anything, not one American politician uh, said anything, because basically these uh, Nazis that uh, begin killing people there, well, they are installed by U.S. government. 
Потом начались долгие 8 лет переговоров, в которых участвовала Россия. Uh, then went on uh, long eight years of negotiations with participation of Russia. Восемь лет uh, мы пытались договориться с Западом и с Украиной о режиме прекращения огня. For eight years we have tried to negotiate uh, with uh, Ukrainian powers and the West uh, for uh, the mode of ceasefire. Но в итоге даже представители ОБСЕ а, фиксировали ежедневное нарушение режима тишины со стороны украинской армии и наших батальонов. But at the end, even this ОБСЕ uh, monitoring um, organization members, uh, they've noted uh, constant uh, attacks from this uh, national battalions against uh, peaceful population of two republics. And innocent people were killed on a daily basis. And not one son of a bitch in either United States or Europe made any kind of sanctions against these Ukrainian Nazis. And then Активное вооружение армии численностью в 150 тысяч человек, которая подошла к плотную границе Донецких и Луганских областей. Finally, what uh, the West did, they installed this uh, comedian, and under um, the power of this comedian, uh, started to raise an army of 150,000 people. Uh, moving this army towards uh, the two republics who wish to live outside of all this nightmare. Putin uh, Putin moved uh, the army uh, to the Ukrainian border. He сказал европейским и американским лидерам and said to European and American leaders, Leader of NATO and other countries, he asked them to stop sending weapons to the Ukrainian army and the Ukrainian nationalist battalion. Take the army from the border with Donetsk and Lugansk national republics. Take the Minsk agreement. Stop killing the Russian Ведь Донецкий и Луганский 70% это граждане России. Вы думаете, американцы послушали? Нет, потому что они хотели этого кризиса. И мы вынуждены были защитить наше население от натовской агрессии, от агрессии фашистов на территории Украины. So uh, Putin said, okay, uh, you should stop uh, delivering weapons uh, to these national battalions to Ukrainian army, you should stop killing of our people, uh, people whom, well, basically they are Russian and we, are, we feel responsible for them because they are getting killed daily. Uh, you should stop all this uh, madness and none of them did anything. Uh, that when uh, came this order to move the army in, basically it's a reply to NATO aggression. Российское министерство обороны опубликовало э, официальные документы Генерального штаба Украины, э, войск Украины, да, в СУ, в которых значилось, что 24 марта этого года 150-тысячная группировка э, в СУ и нас батальонов, вооруженная американским и европейским оружием, должна была начать наступление на Донецк и Луганск. И при этом наступлении погибли бы сотни тысяч человек, которые жили в этих республиках. 
uh, there uh, were uh, documents published um, by Ministry of Defense, Russian Ministry of Defense, seized from um, from Ukrainian territory. Uh, plans on moving on this uh, 150,000 uh, men army uh, into Donetsk and Lugansk uh, using uh, American and European weapon uh, to destroy and kill basically everyone there. Иначе была бы ситуация такая же, как в Южной Осетии, когда грузинская армия с американскими инструкторами открыла огонь под Скинвалу и уничтожила большое количество мирного, мирных жителей. Мы не могли допустить похожего сценария в Донецке и в Луганске. Otherwise, it will be like uh, in Georgia, when empowered by uh, American leaders, they attacked Ossetia, uh, started killing their uh, people. We couldn't afford this thing to happen with Donetsk and Lugansk. И завершая свою речь, я хочу обратиться к простым американцам, которые сейчас подвергаются жесткой пропаганде со стороны своих СМИ и политиков. And uh, at the end of my uh, statement, I would like to um, I would like to talk with real Americans, uh, Americans uh, who listen to all these lies uh, brought by your politicians. I would like to address you. Я хочу обратиться к антивоенным организациям и политическим партиям в Америке. I would like to address uh, anti-war organizations and political parties in the United States. Почему сейчас вы выходите на центральные площади своих городов и поддерживаете Украину? Почему вы на протяжении восьми лет не поддерживали uh, мир? когда представители нацбатов и ВСУ убивали людей в Донецке и Луганске. Почему вы не выступали за мир? Или люди в Донецке чем отличаются от людей в Киеве? How that happened that during last eight years, when uh, Ukrainian army and national battalions were killing people in Donetsk and Lugansk, and uh, none of you uh, made any kind of demonstrations, but you are doing these demonstrations now. So how does that happen? Is that uh, because people in uh, Kiev, uh, like, do they work more than people in Donetsk and Lugansk? Are people or, of Donetsk and Lugansk less people? Less humans. <laughs> Мы никогда не имели колониальной истории. Мы всегда боремся за суверенитет и за справедливость в отношении малых народов. И в этой истории мы полностью правы. И те, кто сегодня говорит о том, что мы агрессируем в отношении суверенного государства, просто дураки. И пусть они скажут это семьям, в Донецке и Луганске, у которых погибли родные и близкие. Ведь за последние 8 лет украинскими нацистами было убито 15 тысяч мирных жителей. 15 тысяч мирных жителей. Uh, and uh, Russia does not have colonial history. We didn't uh, turn, uh, we didn't uh, occupy other lands, turning their uh, population into slaves. And uh, whatever this uh, Nazi is doing, they, they killed over 15,000 innocent people during the last year, eight years of conflict. And you should understand it. If you understand it, you're, you're blind. If you don't understand it, you are blind. И посмотрите, как они относятся к африканским и индийским студентам на Украине как они их притесняют, избивают, отнимают у них деньги и не дают им вернуться домой, потому что они поганые расисты. Спасибо. And see how they treat African and Indian students in uh, Ukraine territories now, how they beat them up, how they take all of their money and not allow them to leave, uh, basically holding them hostages.
they are they are racist. Thank you. Uhuru, thank you, President Aina, for that statement and this position coming from Russia. As mentioned, we are live with Russia in the form of President Alexander Ayanov representing the anti-globalization movement of Russia. So I want to invite our leadership, Chairman Amalia Shatella, to this discussion. And Chairman, I wanted to see if you want, uh, wanted to contribute to uh, the statement that was put forth by President Ayanov. Uhuru, Chairman. Uhuru, thank you very much. Uh, Comrade Alex, uh, it's good to see you again. Um, I want to thank you for being with us uh, on today. Uh, I am uh, the chair of the African Socialist International, which is the African People's Socialist Party uh, existing uh, throughout the world. And uh, what we have come to understand is that Many, many people, uh, especially those of us who've experienced colonial, colonialism in the past, uh, we distrust what uh, the US and European media are saying about uh, the, the Russia-Ukraine uh, question. Uh, as you just mentioned, uh, Russia never participated uh, in colonizing Africa or uh, other peoples uh, around the world. Uh, and in fact, Russia um, uh, came under attack first by the West 105 years ago in uh, 1917 after the Russian Revolution. That was uh, something that would overturn colonialism around the world. It was a revolution that sought uh, to uh, win freedom for all of the working peoples of the world. And since that time, Russia has been under attack by all the colonial powers of the world. And it has been able recently uh, uh, to, using NATO, recruit uh, even uh, more uh, powers against Russia. So uh, I wanted to express appreciation for your being here and to speak to our audience. And also, uh, I think it's important that uh, you address this question of some in Europe and in the United States are trying to create a no-fly zone over Ukraine uh, for the purpose of uh, legitimizing, uh, uh, destroying uh, Russian uh, 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 planes uh, in the sky over Ukraine. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make those observations. And to thank you for speaking to the, the question of the African students uh, who are being held hostage in Ukraine. Uh, for a chairman, so uh, get them back on. Did we lose them? No, they're, they're still here. Just got to okay. unmute and everything. <clears throat> Can you not quit yourself? So uh, I've uh, translated uh, everything to Alexander on this uh, second line. Okay, so we, we need him to unmute. I'm trying to... Um. Саш, да, включи. Yes, yes, yes. I am here. Uhuru. Okay, so um, thank you, Chairman, um, for you know some of those observations. And I don't know, um, President Ayanov, I know that you only have a, a short amount of time with us today. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you know, respond to some of the things that the Chairman said, and also. Um, the whole question of this white nationalist assault on the colonized population, Africans, as you mentioned, Indian and other colonized peoples trying to flee Ukraine. Um, just appreciate you uh, being able to speak to that. And if also you could say more um, about that as well. Um, but I just want to, to see if you wanted to respond to the uh, intervention the chairman has made up to now. Значит, если у тебя есть что-то добавить потому что сказал uh, наш председатель, uh, 
ответить на то, что он говорит, и также прояснить больше ситуацию с, с, с африканскими студентами. Там мы, был, мы были бы очень благодарны. Ухуру, я очень благодарен комрадам Омали, Сазамай. Big friends, I know him the many years. Uh, many years ago, he came with a big delegation from uh, Uhuru Movement to the Moscow. And we organized a big conference, and I really love to all comrades from Uhuru uh, Movement. And uh, we really thank you for your support us now for this uh, really bad time to the Russian citizen around to the world. Uh, the, the next speech and the Russians, oh, sorry. Uh, сейчас мы стоим вместе с африканскими студентами на одной линии у одного барьера uh, на Украине, uh, где к русским и к всем афри африканцам uh, есть российское отношение и они говорят о том, что они последователи вот этой белой нации о которой говорил Гитлер в 1939 году перед началом большой войны. Right now uh, we are standing by African students in Ukraine and uh, we see we both in fact see this racism by um, Ukrainian authorities and they are treating us um, exactly by Hitler's ideology, like they are one supreme white nation and uh, like everyone who is not like them, well, he should cease to exist. Uh, and uh, they really don't care if it's uh, Russian or African or uh, somebody from India maybe or, or whatever. Every day I talk on the phone with представителями различных организаций и государственных институтов из Индии, Азии, Ближнего Востока и Африки. И все они возмущены тем поведением, российским поведением со стороны украинской власти в отношении иностранных студентов. Но нам удалось за последнюю неделю вывести из нацистского плена 126 африканцев. Uh, I'm holding constant uh, contact with uh, various institutions in Asia, in India, in Middle Eastern countries, and we are all working to uh, extract uh, these uh, students held hostages by Ukrainian authorities, and last week we managed to extract 126 students. Сейчас их безопасности ничего не угрожает, но есть еще представители различных африканских стран, которые до сих пор остаются в городах и поселениях, где действуют украинские националистические батальоны, и их безопасности есть достаточно сильная угроза. Uh, and uh, although these uh, people uh, that we have saved, they are uh, actually safe and sound now, uh, but there are still many people, including Africans, uh, uh, spread all around Ukraine in areas controlled by national battalions, and uh, we really are afraid for their lives. Yeah, Внимание, я хочу заострить на информационной войне. А вчера кадры, облетевшие весь мир, демонстрировали о том, что якобы российская армия нанесла удар по роддому, где были беременные женщины и новорожденные дети, и якобы представители нацбатов их эвакуировали. Но на самом деле этот фейк удалось развенчать. На самом деле в этом здании находились, находился нацбатальон Азов, и там не было гражданских лиц, и, соответственно, удар действительно был нанесен но по их позициям. Дальше они просто свезли людей, загримировали их и показали, что вот, смотрите, 
какие фашистские действия производит Россия. Поэтому информационная война на сегодняшний день нацелена на граждан на Западе, потому что их по факту отключили от российских медиа и от российских сегментов интернета. Uh, led, led against by, in fact, by Western media against Western people because they are basically disconnected from other side right now. Uh, like, uh, like what happened uh, before a few days when they showing these pictures of uh, women hurt in um, so-called um, attack by Russian military on uh, maternity hospital. Uh, in fact, uh, I can tell you for real that attack took place, but uh, the problem is uh, there, uh, that hospital, in fact, uh, is evacuated since a uh, long time, and it's being held by Ukrainian National Battalion Azov. Uh, they used it to attack uh, Russian military, and they got hit. After they got hit, uh, after about 24 hours they uh, brought uh, uh, this uh, people there they uh, added some makeup and they showed like uh, like see this uh, terrible russian army it's uh, killing innocent people pregnant women and stuff like that today, Russians are facing segregation all around the globe, and that's what uh, American authorities want. Жгутся российские рестораны, подвергаются вандализму зданий и машины, принадлежащие русским по всему миру. Russian restaurants are burned, and cars are destroyed, uh, homes defaced all around the globe. Это то, что хотели американские политики и uh, компании. That exactly what wanted American politicians and uh, what needed uh, American, well, actually multinational corporations. И uh, сегодня uh, мы не увидим uh, на экранах uh, американских масс-медиа информации о том, сколько американцы убили людей в Ливии. Сирии, Йемене, Судане и в других странах, где сейчас они проводят свои военные операции. And we will not see on American media right now uh, how many uh, collateral damage, how many population killed in Syria, in Libya, in Yemen, and in uh, number, like countless number of other countries. И я прошу вас пытаться отсеивать информацию, которая является чистой пропагандой западных империалистов. Я прошу вас не воспринимать русских как агрессоров. Мы победили в Великой Отечественной войне и избавили мир от фашизма. Сегодня наша задача сделать то же самое. Мы не сможем дальше жить, если по улицам Киева будут маршаловать ветераны войск СС. Спасибо. Uh, I urge you to pay attention to what is being fed to you by official media. And uh, we, uh, we've defeated uh, fascism, we've defeated Adolf Hitler and uh, Well, basically today we have the same struggle, struggle uh, against fascism, struggle against segregation, struggle for freedom of nations. Thank you. Uhuru, thank you, President Ayanov. Um, Chairman, did you want to say anything to that statement or we can move to the another question? Well, I'm looking... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, thank you, uh, Comrade uh, 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 Sasha. I, I think that um, I've been to Moscow. Uh, I've been uh, to the underground stations that in the United States refer to subway. I've seen the 
the most beautiful station there. And I've, I've heard uh, Paul Robeson, uh, an African who uh, uh, was a friend uh, of Russia uh, and in Moscow. In fact, he was poisoned in Moscow by the US CIA uh, uh, to neutralize him because uh, he was a supporter uh, of that time, Soviet Russia. And I've, I've heard him singing um, uh, on the, on the uh, sound system, the International. That's in, that's, that's in Moscow. I've been uh, to see the, uh, the institution and the, uh, uh, the monuments built for Alexander Pushkin uh, in Moscow, black man, it's prominent. It's not even uh, uh, that much of a deal because it's kind of ordinary. I've seen the location of what used to be the Patrice Lumumba uh, uh, institution that had been created in Moscow uh, for Africans who uh, were fighting against white colonialism from the same colonizers who are now attacking uh, Russia through NATO uh, and, and, and institutions like that. So I, I know that there's a fundamental difference in, in, in the history and the historical relationship that we've had uh, with, with Russia than what, than what we've had with America, England, France, all those countries that's, that's lined up now against Russia. So I'm saying that in relationship and response to what uh, Comrade uh, Alex has just said, that uh, you can't judge a situation or a process by what is happening at the moment. You must know the history of the process. So even if they don't allow information to come to the United States about what is happening in Russia, who's doing what, even if they keep that information from coming, we know the history of our relationship with England, France, the United States, and all those powers, and the history of our relationship with Russia that has been on the side of the freedom of Africa, African people, and that has an institutionalized process or has had one uh, there before. So that should be the starting point of our understanding of this question. If we don't know the details, we know the history of our relationship to Russia. We know the history of our relationship with the United States, with France, with England, with Belgium, with all those forces that are now engaged in attacking Russia. So uh, I just wanna make that point that I think is extremely important. So even if you don't have information about the specifics, you know that history and that history should help to, uh, you to understand that there's something wrong with what what England, the United States, France, and the rest of them are saying uh, about Ukraine and Russia. You know that there are lies involved because they've never told the truth to us at any time in our history. So I just wanted to say that, comrade, and then you can move the, you know, the agenda, Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, Chairman. I, I really think that's important, um, what you just laid out around the question of, of history and how we got here, because if you don't know anything else um, outside of what imperialism is, is putting out about Russia, we know this history of uh, uh, imperialist aggression against Russia. We know that Russia was not at the Berlin conference that divided up Africa, um, uh, you know, uh, and got, you know, through the process of feudalism, you know, to this world economic system, not through the colonial assault on Africa, um, but um, as the whole world was forcibly locked into the colonial capitalist mode of production. So um, just really, really appreciate that because that's the context in which this whole discussion has to be had um, because, you know, most people, um, you know, want to point out certain contradictions because they are, they are uh, not, um, willing to say outright that they are in support of U.S. imperialism, they are support in support of what's happening in Ukraine, um, and um, you know, so this just takes that all away from uh, those forces. So, um, uh, President Alex, I know that uh, we're winding down on the time uh, for you to be here. Uh, can you just give us some uh, fl final closing remarks? Um, and then I want to uh, bring up Secretary General Louise Kinshasa and Director Tafari Mugari to um, you know, come into this discussion and we can build on what's been established. Oh, I'm sorry. Comment, 
Yeah, comment director. Uh, is, is there a time for anybody who's um, attending to ask a question or two? Or do you think, uh, would that be appropriate or should we just go ahead and as you um, move forward as you suggested? Let's okay. move it like you said, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let me. You were asking Sasha if he had something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Да, Саша. Да. Какие-то есть вопросы ко мне, я с удовольствием ответил. Um, okay, if you have any questions for me, I I'm gladly I will gladly answer it. Okay, well, um, let me see because there I'd have to pull those uh, questions from online. Um, or anyone, if there's anyone even on, on you know, or, Zoom who wanted to, oh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Don't hesitate. Let's do it, and so that we can move this process forward, comment. Yes, and um, Chairman, we could also bring up S.G. Louisi and uh, yes, 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 um, good, if good. They have anything as well? Good. So let's bring up these comrades. <clears throat> Who S.G. Louisi? Who Director Akili? Who Chairman? Who Comrade Alexander? Bro. Bro, so um, looks like Tafari is reconnecting, but uh, Secretary General Luazi, did you have anything you wanted to add or even ask um, President Alex while we have him? Mm -mm. Uh, first of all, it's just a really great honor to be on this panel. And um, I just want to unite you with uh, everything that's being said. Uh, and uh, if I have to say uh, anything at the moment, it's just that uh, f we are just very proud of this very moment. Chairman uh, talked about the history, uh, the weight, the weight of uh, of history uh, from, uh, for example, the '60s. Uh, as he's been said, I'm you know I uh, was born in a in a Congo. We the prime minister there, but I used to remember. Uh, was assassinated by the CIA, and uh, they used to tell us he was killed because he was uh, working for uh, the Soviet uh, Union. And uh, here we are today, uh, over 10 million people are killed in the Congo, and the whole Western media is silenced, completely silenced. And uh, there has not been a single uh, support of the uh, government or the forces killing people in the Congo by Soviet Union. Soviet Union doesn't even exist, you know. It's the United States that's doing it. It's the British that are doing it. The Belgians are doing it. All the giant corporations are doing it. And then the, uh, the United States asked the government of Congo to go to the UN and vote against Russia when Russia has not played any role in killing anybody in the Congo. 10 million people killed. Not yesterday, because yesterday was Leopold II, the king of Belgium, who killed over 10 million Africans in the Congo. And uh, the king of Belgium wants to go to Congo to return the tooth of Patricia Mumba that those who killed the woman were kept in Belgium. <coughs> and uh, so this basically uh, uh, the moments of the truth. You, you have to know the history. The history is so profound. If you know the history, as the chairman said, then the starting point uh, is, is made uh, just um, in a simple way. And uh, also uh, right now in Africa, increasingly, in fact, other people are saying the majority of Africans, they say they're standing with Russia. And this is something uh, is causing serious concerns for the Western, uh, uh, for the colonizers' leaders, the leaders of the US or France or Britain or Belgium, that in Africa, people are calling for an alliance with Russia and the young people who are the majority of the population in Africa, they're saying they're standing with Russia. That's why you saw this one explanation 
that some of the African president uh, abstain because they have to face the African population. So, and this is exciting for everybody who want to see a free world, free from, uh, from colonialism, uh, so that uh, every people, every nation, you know, can enjoy uh, the fruit of the labor. Uh, they can enjoy freedom, you know, uh, on this planet. So these are uh, some of the things uh, I want to say because it's really, really uh, powerful to hear the comrades straight uh, from the Moscow speaking to us and the Africans from everywhere also listening. And uh, I'm just looking forward to this new process that's, you know, that's taking place that was disrupted in the 60s, that our chairman, Omari Shera, with uh, his leadership in building this African Socialist International, we're bringing back uh, that movement again. So the process of Africans this time talking to uh, Russians under our own leadership, uh, it's happening. And uh, so as uh, UP Newton used to say, they do do anything but destroying the Black Panther Party because the African People's Socialist Party and the Burning Sphere newspaper is there. So I just want to say this uh, word. So I really, uh, yeah. And one question I think uh, I, I, I was going to ask, because from here where I'm located in England, they're talking about no fly zone a lot, really a lot. So if uh, Comrade Alexander uh, can say something about that, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your speech. Uh, thank you for your support, the Russian people. Now we stay together with the African people or the all peoples, freedom peoples around the world. As it's true, if uh, somebody put a uh, no-fly zone in the Ukraine, uh, this is very dangerous to the Russian army. And uh, Putin say, if NATO uh, close the uh, uh, flight. Uh, this is a uh, aggression to the Russian. Now the NATO scare for this moment and uh, cancel it. Uh, question about the uh, not flying zone. And uh, now NATO give many weapons to the Ukraine Navy. And uh, the first step. The second step, the many people uh, from uh, Canada, United Kingdom, United States, or European countries, uh, this is uh, not only civil people, this is uh, officials, this is uh, really officials coming to the Ukraine war against Russian army. It's today. Now, Russia have the war conflict with Mata to Ukraine. This is a proxy conflict, not open <coughs> war operation. This is a proxy conflict, but uh, Nazi officers from Ukraine army war together with American and European people against Russia to Ukraine territory. It's today time. It's a very dangerous to us. It's a really destroy all uh, political mechanism. In the future, we see aggression to NATO in African peoples or Asian peoples. The first country who won't kill uh, NATO's politics is uh, China and Russia. And now NATO have the war against Russian people, Chinese people, and African people. And we must support together. We must stay together for this aggression. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know what, Al what uh, Alex's uh, situation is, Comrade uh, Keeley, in terms of time. Yes, President um, Alex, are you do you have to come off now or are you able to continue? Yes, uh, yes, I, I need to come come to the conference, the big conference to the Multimic Center. And uh, we speak uh, about the situation to Ukraine was the Russian or uh, uh, international mass media. 
And uh, I really appreciate it for this uh, conference call. I, I really like the all freedom people who support us. This is a really dangerous situation to the peace around the world. And uh, I'm really sorry I don't have the uh, more time, but uh, all time I have the connection with you and give you more information if you want, uh, or the links or videos. Uh, if you want, I send the all details and uh, we'll be in touch. I'm really appreciated for this uh, conference. Uhuru, thank you, comrades. Uhuru. 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 Bye, comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you. Bye bye. Uhuru. Wow. Your so... comment, direct. I know you know this may have been a little difficult for some. You know, with the translations, and and it was difficult for me. It, to convey some things, but I, I really would like for us to continue this discussion yes. uh, if, if we have time. I mean, uh, <clears throat> because there's so much happening and, and uh, the world has changed. And uh, it's, but it's not as, it is not as comfortable as uh, some of the, the US and, and these European colonial powers thought it was going to be. Uh, because what is what is revealed itself is that they do not have the complete loyalty of the of the much of the colonial world, despite the fact that we're looking at neo-colonialism everywhere. They, they there's a they don't have the loyalty. It's not an absolute loyalty. It's going to it's looking more and more like the white man, the white people who are attacking. Russia, uh, and that's just that's how it's it's translating right now. Uhuru, Uhuru, Chairman. Yes, yeah. and I, yeah, I unite with just continuing this discussion. We have, um, I know we just brought on Secretary General Mwazi. We have Comrade Director Tafari, um, and uh, I don't know, Director Tafari, how much you've uh, been able to uh, uh, hear. But I wanted to just acknowledge your presence and you know see if you had any remarks before because we do have questions coming in now. Um, so, I but I do wanted to I did want to open up to you, uh, Director Tafari, to see if you have any opening statements um, for this discussion. Yeah, Uhuru, Comrade uh, Director Gile, I, I want to. Uh, I don't know how my network is, but uh, you know it keeps breaking as I was listening here. So it I hope I can. Here. Oh, 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 chairman. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want, I want to salute you, Chairman, and all you know, Secretary General Louis Kinshasa. And just what just happened right now with the comrade, uh, you know, uh, from from Russia, uh, because uh, you know this platform is able to what is doing is it's able to you know give access to the majority, a lot of people, masses of people, uh, to you know information that is actually censored, you know. And uh, you know, just reflecting on how in schools they teach. You know, I'm not suggesting that there's communism in Russia or anywhere in the world, but they 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 love saying that there are two ideologies uh, in terms of e economies in the world: capitalism, and then they say communism. And then how they describe communism, they'll say, uh, you know, uh, there's no freedom of press and all these things and whatever. There's censorship of information. But then this, when we, whenever you turn on the news, you know, like could be CNA or all sorts of news medias, even here in South Africa, it's information is really censored, you know, capitalism does, you know, suggest that some such and such information cannot be passed up to, to public, you know, it's always biased, always one side. And, uh, you know, and the question really is, is about power. It's, it's not even about racism and so forth. So, and that's what we're seeing right now. More of that is being revealed. So I just appreciate the fact that the comrade from, from Russia was here and he was able to speak uh, from it. And, uh, and this way that uh, imperialism can, uh, can, can isolate, you know, uh, like the forces that are against it, you know, cause, uh, you know, we have all these puppets, you know, part, some of them are in Africa. You know, Estu Luese has just mentioned that they can't like go out and say they they support you know the, the aggression on Russia right now because the masses of people when you go to social media people are questioning like like how how could we support US imperialism after what we have suffered from US imperialism the the, the history is there like you've been saying so 
uh, this is, I, I just want to acknowledge the significance of this program, you know, the series, and especially today's, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, program with, with the comrade from, uh, from Russia. Uhuru. Uhuru, Director Tafari, thank you. Um, and again, I just really want to salute this leadership, this discussion. And um, there have been questions that have come in. Uh, some were directed to uh, President Alex. But um, Chairman, I want to just go ahead and you know pose it to this panel because I know that we can deal with them as well. Um, <clears throat> and the first question was coming uh, came from uh, Isla Isla Yuroba on YouTube, who asked Chairman, can you speak about the request from the USA for Venezuela's crude oil? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting situation. There was an article, I think, even in the Wall Street Journal uh, today about how uh, the war that's happening, uh, that the world is making against Russia led by the United States uh, has resulted or is resulting in new foreign policy uh, kinds of uh, 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 positions within the, 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 by the United States government that uh, the governments that they have you know, looked at as being bad and said bad things about them. Now they're going to have to try to find a better relationship with them if they can. And uh, they talked about how uh, it doesn't look like that's going to work. But China, they wanted to do China so they can use China against Russia. Uh, and but Venezuela, you know, uh, with the oil uh, uh, crisis, the petroleum energy crisis that this war has uh, has resulted in that they want to they they're going to look toward getting uh, uh, petroleum uh, uh, gas uh, uh, oil from from Venezuela, uh, uh, and I just think that uh, it's uh, it's extraordinary situation and they they can't rescue themselves by getting petroleum from Venezuela. The, everything has changed. They they never understand it. They really are always fighting the last war. They think they can retreat and just retrieve this relationship with Venezuela, or they can get the oil from Venezuela that they had said they were not going to get from Venezuela because they were starving Venezuela. Listen, a few years ago, the United States, working with Saudi Arabia, initiated an oil glut, just, uh, just produced so much uh, uh, oil that the price of, of, of oil and uh, dropped precipitously. It was done directly to hit Russia that was dependent of, uh, uh, on, on petroleum and oil uh, resources. That was, it was primarily exporting energy. That was how its economy uh, was maintained. C crush Russia, it was targeting Iran at the time. Uh, so much of its income was due to energy, and they were struggling to destroy Iran. And it was targeting Venezuela and Cuba. Venezuela, of course, because it was an oil-producing country that, that, that was going to suffer. The economy was going to suffer when they caused this glut, oil glut around the world. Anybody remember that? And if they got Venezuela, that meant Cuba. They were attacking Cuba through that because Cuba was relying on resources coming from Venezuela. So this was something that they had done before. They, they've tried to use this energy uh, uh, and manipulate it in a fashion that's going to, uh, to benefit uh, them. And now they're, they're, posturing, uh, they're talking about uh, buying uh, uh, energy from Venezuela uh, uh, so that they can uh, 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 stabilize their own you know, situation with the cost, cost the, the price of oil energy um, uh, is going up so much that it even is a crisis for the rulers in this country, in, in this country, I mean, in the United States, uh, 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 because uh, they're already grumbling uh, in within the population of the United States about inflation, things costing more, some of it coming from uh, the pandemic and so-called supply uh, chain uh, 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 disruption. Uh, it's a crisis. They can't resolve it. I just wanted to say, what was the sister's name from Yoruba? Um, her name was, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Is Isla, Isla Yoruba. Isla Yoruba. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that uh, 
I don't know how the uh, Venezuelan government is going to react to this. I don't know if they've actually begun the process of uh, uh, de-sanctioning Venezuelan uh, oil so that it can uh, go uh, fully on the market uh, uh, or not. But I know that it's not going to solve their problems. And it's, it's, uh, it's spitting in the wind. That's, that's what I would say, uh, Isla. Uh, it won't solve their problem. Uh, and that's, that's about it. Over, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> so just keeping on with the questions, uh, we have one from Comrade Zanlile, and I just think this one is important. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of discussion happening right now around, you know, this question and why should Africans support Russia? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of um, even, you know, what we've seen this whole time around the whole subjective question and the real subjective response and how, and, you know, the imperialist propaganda is fomenting a subjective response to um, uh, the situation. So, um, <clears throat> you so know, I know this time we can even deal with some of the subjective stuff as well. I mean, uh, I, I think it's good uh, for uh, some of it's characterized as subjective, uh, 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 but some of it is stuff that's being put forward uh, uh, to muddy up the waters and to try and win African people to a reactionary stance. And I don't care if it's subjective or not, if it's reactionary, it's reactionary. If it works against the interest of Africa, the African revolution, African people, and if it works in solidarity with the US imperialism, it can't, you can't be on the right side. The United States has never, can never uh, participate uh, in a righteous war. Any, there's no such, in the history of the existence of this country, never has the United States been involved in a just war. It is incapable of being involved in a just war. Uh, its existence is a consequence of an unjust war that was made against indigenous peoples uh, on this land and what have you. So I have no hesitation. Let, let the subjective nonsense, you know, if we shouldn't preoccupy ourselves and let that dominate this discussion, but it's not something that we, we run from. Uhuru. Okay, Uhuru. All right, yeah, well, um, I'll refer to one of those uh, questions in just a moment. I wanna take this question from Comrade Zanlile um, uh, in Pico in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, uh, she, got, she asks, with China um, exploiting Africa, what is their position on Africans if Russia stands in solidarity with the Chinese and with Africans? Then what is China's position and do you think China will stand in solidarity with, um, I believe with the US? China is and always has been for their own power. Um, well, um, in, in just in response to the back part of that, uh, every country that's self-conscious and uh, has always been for their own power. It's only uh, Africans who have been talking about subjective to some kind of personalized, uh, subjective kind of politic that have not quite understood uh, that uh, every country, every power uh, protects and is interested in its, in its own uh, uh, power and interest. Uh, however, the question is whether or not the interests of that country, that power, that people, that social force is one that aligns with the interests of Africa and the African working class. And uh, that's the question before us, not necessarily whether somebody is looking out for their own interests, because everybody does. In some sections, when you look at the U.S. and Europe, uh, they, their interest has, has come about through exploiting Africa, through enslaving us, uh, through uh, taking our territories, our countries, and maintaining that even now. And every international institution that they have created has been for that purpose. I think that's one thing we know So uh, for sure. So the interests of, 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 of the US and, and the other colonial powers have always been uh, uh, not only for themselves, but being for themselves meant they were against us and against the rest of the co oppressing colonized peoples. So uh, uh, I think it's important to recognize that nothing else, this, 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 uh, the reality is that every power, every country will be for itself. A problem that you and I have is that uh, with the exception of the moment, brief moment in history of Garvey, where there was a struggle for Africa to be for Africans, uh, where there was an understanding uh, that Africa for Africans, Africa for Africans, not Africans for Nigerians or Ghanaians or, 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 and not Africans for Africa or on the continent of Africa only and, and, and Africans uh, in the United States are being 
for black people in the United States or Africans, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in Trinidad or some other place just being for that. Garvey came from a tiny island called Jamaica. That's where he grew up. That's where he was born. And he came to understand his relationship to Africa and Africans around the world. And he began the process of organizing so that there would be an Africa. There is no Africa. Now, there are several different things that's in Africa. Uh, and that's, the, that's one of the problems that we have. So when you say that there is no Africa, it means that there is no African opinion, except for that being created by the African Socialist International that's uniting the opinions of Africans all around the world, just as Garvey did more than 100 years ago. This is where we can have a situation where Africa is conscious of its interests as, as Africa and African people become conscious of our interests as Africans. So Chinese are conscious of their interests. China is conscious of its interests. Russia conscious of its interests, uh, et cetera. Uh, but the problem is Africa is not conscious of its interests except as it is reflected in the African Socialist International, this revolutionary movement that speaks for Africa and with Africa. So that's, that's I've spoken too much on that uh, comment, Akile, just in terms of eating up so much of the time. I want to stop talking, but that was, I thought, really important for us to understand that everybody is for themselves. The question is whether or not you can, whether or not you can unite with them uh, based on themselves and what they're fighting for uh, uh, being something that speaks to your interests, it coincides with what it is that you, where it is you're trying to go. And that, that's the fundamental question that we have. And we have to be for, have the ability to be for ourselves. And that's why joining the African People's Socialist Party, becoming a part of the African Socialist International is so important because we have to be for Africa and Africans. And you can't do that unless you're participating in that kind of process. Uhuru. One Africa, one nation. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman. I just really appreciate that. And as you've always stated, that Africa, Africans have to have an Africa plan because the rest of the world does. And, you know, and I just think that coincides with recognizing our own interests and being able to define our relationships with the rest of the world. But it would have to be based on Africa seizing power, seizing our land, our own resources and, you know, our own government and being able to, you know, make those determinations about how we would relate to, you know, other forces in the world. Well, there was a time when China uh, uh, uh did have Africa's interests at heart. And the same thing is true of a Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, but <laughs> that was because at that time, it was, had leadership that presupposed a relationship, an interest, the common interest in mm -hmm. the oppressed peoples of the world. And it would, see, it would serve their interest to see us free. That's why when we saw the first time we saw the, the struggle in beginning to emerge in, 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 in Nicaragua, uh, we say, wow, that's contributing to our freedom. That's what, and we were able to jump right on that and turn resources over to them in Nicaragua. We had people asking us questions, why are you working with them Iranians? Because they white too. At the time, they had initiated a, a major impact on, on the ability of the United States to dominate the world. Uh, so the thing is, they worked in their interest, we worked in our interest, and we were able to see that the interests of the two of us were uh, uh, coincided. And that's, that's the ordinary normal. Uh, the problem is that we have to have a capacity to have a common interest and have to have the power to exercise that common interest. And Uhuru, so please talk to let some other people talk. I just wanted to, Uhuru, to yeah. yeah, Uhuru. Uhuru, uh, Ashley Lazier, Director Tafari, please join in this discussion. Uhuru, um, I just want to unite with uh, uh, our chairman uh, because uh, every, the, this question of uh, you know Russian Chinese they have no interest or or Russians uh, white people too. You already heard uh, the summation uh, chairman has been doing. Uh, Africa has to be clear. We're talking of fighting the colonizers. The colonizers use the term white as a political term, and that covers you know and uh, the really contradiction, which is colonialism, you know, as a mode of production. You know, so that's a really important point. So when you say you're anti-white, uh, if you mean you're anti-colonialism, that makes sense. You know, because you already heard that the Russia doesn't have Russia doesn't have a history of colonialism with us. So the term of whiteness, when it comes to Russia, it becomes redundant because the fundamental is colonialism. 
you know, uh, that's and, really- uh, and Related to that comment, Secretary General, you know, even the concept of whiteness uh, comes from the colonial process, this colonial slavery. Was no white person before colonial slavery. There was no such thing as a white man. Exactly. And so uh, we, what we've tried to say from the very beginning is that what gave rise to the Europe as we know it has been colonial capitalism. That's the birth of the white man. But Russia was not a part of that. So you can even make the argument that Russia, that, that Russia is not the white man. The white man is the rest of these people. And this is not a, an attempt to deflect what people refer to as the racial character of, of, of our oppression. Uh, but the fact is, is to give definition, better concrete definition, science to the whole racial question. And we're talking about colonialism. That's the birth of the white man. It didn't, he didn't exist before colonial slavery. That's what gave him birth. And it's going to be colonial slavery that gives him death. But that's another story, comrade. Uh, Secretary yeah. Thank Trump. you, Chairman, for that yeah. intervention. That is Hey, everyone should be clear uh, yeah. uh, on that point. You know, it's colonialism that gave birth to the white man. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, or white woman. That's just, that's yeah. really, really uh, the starting point. Before that, you will see no single documents referring to people from Europe. Even the term Europe was born the same time as the term uh, white. You know, they're like twin uh, denomination. You know. The European nation was born through this process. Of yeah, colonial definitely. capitalism was no Europe was no Europe, it was mm -hmm. colonial slavery that gave birth to that. Definitely. So I hope uh, everything is clear uh, on that point. And uh, the other thing is uh, when it comes to uh, the question of, of interest, uh, everyone recognizes the interest. For example, they, the, uh, the colonizers, uh, the EU, the US, uh, you know, Canada, all of them, they have imposed in fact, they're imposing sanctions by the second on Russia. That's, uh, you know, how desperate they are, you know. Uh, but Germany said, we need the gas. So pull sanctions, but don't, turn, don't allow Putin to turn off the gas. So therefore, the payments, you know, uh, both of the banking system they have between Germany and Russia is operating because Germany needs gas. You see, self-interest. The United States, U.S. against Russia, but I say my interests also have to be taken into consideration. And you can dig deep, you know, the economic aspect of it. You will see there's so many exceptions uh, within those sanctions that everyone's trying to protect uh, their own uh, interests. And uh, another thing is uh, Africans have to be uh, uh, very clear is that uh, you see... China and uh, Russia, they have ended foreign rule or they are, you know, the right, the success of Russia is that there is no foreign rule over Russia. The success of China is that there is no foreign rule of China. Now, Africa and the African nation, it's a bit different. Not only we need to end foreign rule, but the problem is that these Colonialism as a mode of, of production, the starting point is the colonization of Africa. And the cornerstone of the whole capitalist, of the whole colonial capitalist economy is the colonization of Africa and of black people everywhere. Which means that we have to end foreign rule, we also have to destroy colonialism as a mode of production. So, the, the Africa and the black people, generally speaking, African people everywhere, this is a, a historical uh, mission. And that's why Garvey is so significant, as we hear Chairman saying that over uh, and over, that Garvey understood that, but Garvey was disrupted. He didn't complete his task. And uh, Kwame Nkrumah didn't complete his task. He was, you know, attacked by the African people who is in power today. So who's going to complete that mission? And uh, this is where Chairman uh, O'Malley comes in with African Socialist International, that uh, we are responding, but our response can't come from state power. We don't have state power. We have to complete the revolution. We have to build the organization. We have to organize every black person on the planet everywhere. We have to create the most dynamic movement of the, the most 
dynamic national liberation the world has ever seen. And this, the, uh, you know, this will be uh, basically that will change everything. And uh, this is what we're trying to do. And this is why people have, you know, everyone has to become a recruiter of dynamic uh, significance. You know, history is going so fast and Africans have to do everything faster and faster so that we can play our role. So I just want to appreciate uh, Chairman's leadership profoundly and uh, everybody who is making a decision to join and to take the revolution on their shoulders. Uhuru. Yes, uh, Uhuru. I just want to say one thing. Um, regarding China's relationship with uh, Africa and so forth, you know, it's just uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, something different. But uh, when China has today, you know, like uh, when China wants to engage with Africa, or even Russia wants to, or any other, you know, like group of people want to engage with Africa, they have to go through the African petty bourgeoisie. You know, I just wanted to, you know, uh, raise that aspect, you know, uh, of of the African liberation movement uh, in terms of the, the the class struggle in Africa. That uh, what the one of the significance of the of us, you know, uh, building the African Socialist International is that we have to raise the African working class so that when we begin to engage with other groups of people, we can be able to put the, the interest of the African nation, uh, you know, through the African working class on the forefront, because that's not what happens right now. Like, for example, when you get um, China saying that they are, you know, offering some development, developmental aid, something like that, development aid, uh, they're going to build a bridge or anything like that. Most of the time, uh, this type of development doesn't go to the, the townships where the African working class are, you know, or to ensuring that African people can have access to water and whatever. You'll see uh, how, where this, it's usually maybe a railroad, a, an airport or something like that. Why is because the African petty bourgeoisie is who the, uh, the, 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 the Chinese or the, the Russians will engage with, for example, uh, in, like in, in actual fact. Like when you look at um, Russia right now, uh, Russia is there in Central Africa Republic, you know, uh, and they, they provide security for the government there. But the government in Central Africa Republic is not the African working class who is always like pitted against each other to fight over religion and whatever. So we still have to, uh, you know, raise the class struggle in Africa and, uh, and build an, an, an organization uh, of, of the African working class so that's just one thing that we have to be, you know, aware of. And it's not the responsibility of China uh, to do that per se. You know, I, mean, I know the terms will be different when the African working class are in power. When we begin to engage with maybe say China or Russia, if those, you know, entities still exist and, you know, on the, on the side of, you know, the progressive side, that's going to serve the interest of the, of, the, of the African nation. So, Uhuru. Uhuru. Come at, uh... Director, I'd like to just speak to that. I think it's a really important point that uh, Kamet Tafari just pulled out because, uh, you know, I, I've seen uh, times when uh, before the U.S. succeeded uh, uh, in getting rid of uh, removing uh, Hugo Chavez uh, from the scene in Venezuela, where uh, in uh, attempt to have some kind of uh, unity with Africa, and Chavez at one time was really involved in uh, a, a kind of popular movement uh, in Venezuela uh, to Africanize the country, to promote Venezuela and himself even as being, you know, African. Uh, and but uh, how does then he 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 demonstrate uh, this uh, unity and support for Africa? He does that by coming to certain kinds of deals with uh, uh, inexpensive petroleum or something or some other kind of trade deal uh, with one of these African states. But these are neo-colonial states that he's having this relationship with in the name of it being Africa. And what he ends up doing, of course, is supporting uh, our oppressor, uh, the instrument of our oppression right down the continent of Africa. So that's been the case almost every time uh, uh, in recent history, the time when the great relationship existed between China and Africa, between Russia and Africa, when it was at its height, when it was at its best, was during the struggle for national liberation, 
when it appeared that these revolutionary organizations uh, were fighting for the same thing the communist parties in, in China was fighting for, or the Bolsheviks may have been fighting for uh, in Russia, they was, they, apparently they and Africa were on the same side. But with the consolidation of neo-colonialism and the uh, collapse of uh, anything that approximated a genuine uh, revolutionary communist organization, uh, there and of course they have never existed inside the United States. Uh, then this relationship between uh, the people in terms of our interest, there there was no common interest at that point. And what the African Socialist International is saying is that we will speak for Africa. When, the reason I I'm in Moscow, the reason I'm there, uh, uh, and because don't nobody understands this struggle correctly except us. When I say this, this is not some kind of empty braggadocia. The fact is that. Uh, peoples around the world do not understand the contradiction about Africa and, and, and Africans in the United States and other places. You go there and they, they think of the people because they come from an entirely different historical process than what we come from. They, they have only been able to see us through the lenses of, of the colonial uh, uh, you know, perspective. And so with the colonized, we are the colonized. We have an entirely different perspective once we come into control of our own brains and consciousness separated from uh, that of the oppressor. And uh, so they haven't understood. I go, to, I go to Moscow, I'm in Russia, and uh, uh, people want to be sympathetic to the struggle of the Black people, Black Lives Matter, or, or other kinds of things like that. And uh, they don't understand the difference here. And they think that they, that, that they have accepted the notion that that the black, that the people in the America, in the United States, who for progress, who for freedom, et cetera, uh, 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 and so that we're just one fighting for this progress and freedom. That's not true. They can't understand the colonial contradiction. Just the other day, I mean, speaking to comrades in Russia, they were dumbfounded by a white left peace march that happened uh, in Times Square in the United States where they were carrying the Ukrainian flag and were opposed to Russia. What, what, what kind of peace thing is this they were saying? But that's the colonizer's peace. And yes, the colonizer wants peace, but what brings peace to the colonizer? The fact that the colonized people are not kicking their asses, not fighting against them, that's, that's peace for them. So uh, this is really important to understand that, that uh, people who have assumed they were being united with Africa, they're united with African pedagogy, whether it's China or anybody else. And that's the way that's going to be until we take power. And that's what our project what gives such great significance to, to, to what the African Socialist International is about, Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman. Wow. I mean, that's, that's so powerful. And, you know, I, I want to give um, uh, people an opportunity to, you know, know how they can join this struggle, how they become a part of the African Revolution, how they become a part of this fight to seize power, to seize our Africa, to be able to determine our own futures. Um, and, you know, the, you know, and how the, the whole question of a liberated Africa, what that will look like, how our society will be uh, dictated, determined by, you know, the leadership of the African working class. And the only leading front in the world today that is making that possible, the vehicle for that is the African People's Socialist Party. It is the African People, uh, say African Socialist International, which is the party expressed globally. And you can join that process by going to APSPUhuru.org, join the African Revolution, become a part of this organization. Again, the vehicle for total African liberation, one that is not accepting any less than the total freedom of African people, one that is explicit in our goal to make the African Revolution, to take this power, to, to, to govern to take power and to govern ourselves, to govern our own affairs and for the and for the world in terms of coming into a relationship with Africa, that being determined on our own terms. So I just really want to put that call out to to, to everyone because there is no there is no other organization even claiming to want to do this. It has been the African People's Socialist Party. It's been your leadership chairman over the last 50 years that has taken on this question. Um, and you know, again, as as uh, you know, assume the task of completing the African revolution. I think it's so important what you said about, um, you know, even at one point in time uh, where there was leadership coming from the African working class in the form of the black power movement of the 1960s. And, and even before then in the form of, 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 of Marcus Garvey, where the leadership of the African working class 
was there. It was out in the world. And so you had forces like, uh, you know, uh, China, which was, you know, fighting for communism in China and in Russia, you know, um, you know, fighting to, uh, you know, overthrow, you know, this hold on Russia. But it was in the context of revolu revolution being the main trend in the world and African people had a voice, had our own leadership in this process. And now it's different. And the whole world is locked into this this parasitic economy of colonial capitalism, and uh, the situation is different. So you know we have to overturn the whole colonial capitalist system, and that can only happen through African revolution. And it's not going to happen uh, by a matter of just well wishing. It means that we actually have to be a part of it. We have to join this organization. We have to assume this responsibility as African people to make it happen. Because as Director Tafari said, it's not China's responsibility per se, Russia's responsibility. It is our responsibility to seize our Africa and, you know, and um, self-determination and the ability to govern ourselves. So I uh, just comment, want to- Yeah, comment, uh, Director, I just wanted to, there is a question here. I know that there's much more to be said, but the question was raised, but I think is important for us to understand. This is just still in the context of the, of the Russia-Ukraine uh, question, how it's, uh, uh, you know, affecting the whole world and uh, how the uh, colonial powers are using this uh, as a way to push back anything that approximates a, 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 a attack on this colonial mode of production, anything that to strengthen itself. And the question uh, was uh, uh, one from, uh, from Penny Hess and, and, and uh, repeated by uh, comrade uh, Dennis Knowles. Uh, and that was about, um, the significance of the imposition of a no-fly zone uh, uh, over Ukraine. And that's a critical question because uh, to declare the no-fly zone for NATO, uh, which is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, which is a, a combination of various white colonial powers, uh, 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 military, mil military uh, organization, uh, to, to say that that declare Ukraine a no-fly zone is a de declaration of war, effectively, uh, giving the so-called NATO powers uh, the quote-unquote legal cover authority uh, for uh, shooting down and attacking Russian uh, planes in Ukraine. It's, it, it now uh, removes uh, the covers uh, from uh, the role it's playing in making war against Russia through proxies uh, as it's been characterized, now it comes up and shows its face to the whole public in terms of a war against uh, uh, Russia. So it begins to shoot down war Russian planes. And for uh, neither Russia, I would think, nor the United States wants it to reach that place because once it reaches that place, uh, uh, they can afford these wars through proxies. But once it reaches the place with a direct confrontation uh, open confrontation uh, between the, uh, the uh, colonial powers and Russia, then the question of nuclear weapons become real factors in this discussion. Because once, if it comes up to being the United States versus Russia or France and England and the United States versus Russia, that the nuclear thing becomes a really significant factor. Wars can be fought. Uh, and have been fought. This is why the so-called uh, Cold War was fought uh, without the, the obvious uh, participation of the real, uh, of Russia uh, and, and, and United States in confrontation with each other. So uh, this war uh, from their perspective played out on the ground between colonized people or colonized people and a colonial power, uh, et cetera. But now they're talking about a no-fly zone uh, which opens up the possibility for real direct confrontation, direct open confrontation between the colonial powers and Russia. And that brings in the nuclear option and the, the thing that they like to refer to as World War III uh, would be on in a very serious way. So that's the, that's the, the significance of this no-fly zone. Uh, and, uh, and it's a profound uh, kind of contradiction. And I think that people should be aware of that when you read your newspaper and you see some politician in the United States uh, talking about a no-fly zone, they're pushing for a no-fly zone, or any place else in the world, you hear this 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 actor uh, Zelensky uh, in Ukraine, you know, that saying it should be declared a new a no-fly zone. What Zelensky is saying 
is that he needs the imperialists to enter the war uh, openly uh, or, uh, against Russia, as opposed to allow using them as the as the force that will be making this war against Russia. And that's going to be an extremely dangerous thing. And and the thing is that it's not an impossibility given the 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 lynch mob uh, uh, kind of consciousness and fervor. Uh, that the U.S. and its media and all these forces are uh, pushing uh, in these in these imperialist countries, uh, and I can see people being put in a situation where they have to fight for their political career, like a Biden or somebody running against Biden uh, on the Congress, pushing uh, the no-fly zone and making something like that happen. That's a new ball game. I can tell you, as as serious as what it is now, with that kind of thing happening, it's a new ball game altogether. A direct confrontation between Russia, nuclear armed Russia, and the rest of these nuclear armed powers, it's an entirely different situation. And they can't pretend that it's just the, the little Ukraine, you know, now against, you know, the oppressor Soviet Union. It's direct confrontation. New game. Uhuru, new situation. Most extraordinarily dangerous situation uh, for everybody on the planet Earth. So you should be aware of that. Uhuru. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I, I know that you've been summing up regarding the crisis of imperialism that, you know, it's not it's not something to be taken lightly, you know, and that especially in its final stages and it's back into a corner, it's going to be its most violent self, um, you know, struggling for its life. So I think that, you know, that's just really important. These are things you've been summing up all along before we got here. Well, Director, you know, this whole issue uh, that we see reflected in the in the Question, chats here question about uh, some African forces in the both the Russians and the and the Western colonial capitalist powers are white. And so therefore we should stay out of it because they're both white. Their comment Tafari touched on that earlier on. Uh, but the, the thing is um, that the whole traditional left, uh, you know, in Europe and the world, and, you know, uh, they missed the boat like on this question. And that's why this issue of the colonial mode of production is so important. Because that, that we can't stay out of it. We've been in it from the mix. It, we are the force that gave birth to the whole damn thing. Everything rests upon the shoulders of the, uh, of the Africans and, 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 and colonized peoples of the world. You can't stay out of it because the whole system based on your being in it. So if we are going to, we have to be able to see where our interests lie. And, and the fact is that Russia, I, I made the point, was attacked in 1917 because there was an assumption of the Russian Revolution uh, that it would result in destroying the system of capitalism. But as you and I know, capitalism rests upon the foundation of colonialism. It's a colonial mode of production. And so the white people in their own sense of self-significance uh, uh, get involved in fighting against capitalism because we gave birth to them. Colonialism gave birth to the workers and the bourgeoisie all alike in the capitalist world. And they define this contest, the historically significant contest is one between the white workers and the white bosses. Uh, but we are the critical factor. And some Africans talking about, we got to stay out of it. You're out of your mind. You just don't understand the question because we've been in it. It wouldn't be there without us in it. And so we want to bring the whole thing down. We can't be spectators in, in this whole struggle uh, uh, in the world. We're not spectators, we're key players. Uh, we should be key players if we're going to change our relationship to it. So I, I, Uhura, I just want to make that point. Yes, we will. Yeah, uh -huh. No, I just want to say maybe we are we are in Wakanda. If we're in Wakanda, maybe we would stay a little bit. You know? <laughs> Wakanda, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there are some Africans in St. North St. Louis who think they're in Wakanda. Uhuru. Yes, well, um it's uh this question of uh, Africans should stay out of it is everywhere. You can't really it's just everywhere. Oh damn! Uh, is that is that uh we can't really uh uh you know not deal with it is a is a part of our uh, winning Africans uh to understand and to unite with uh, African uh internationalism. Uh, first, if there is a nuclear war, 
uh, nuclear war is not just between uh, the consequence will not just be between Russia and uh, and Europe. Uh, uh, just between Europe and uh, and us, it will be uh, the consequence of nuclear war is for everybody. It's the whole planet, you know. Uh, the people talking about climate change, but mm -hmm. if you have a nuclear war, you won't be having discussion about climate change anymore. Uh, the colonizers want to they want to uh, to use any opportunity to shut down society, you know, to remove all freedom and uh, uh, you know basic rights. Uh, so uh, a direct confrontation will move them in that direction. They don't want to see you know uh, freedom for colonized people uh, at all. So shut down society, and uh, also uh, one thing uh, that's all. African internationalism is so significant. Up to now, they like to talk about uh, World War, uh, you know, World War One, World War Two, uh, and uh, as Chairman said, it's World War to really value the world. But here, they're talking of stopping Russia. They're talking of stopping China, because China is not, in a, you know, in in a, in a picture like Russia. But don't make no mistake, these the. the this is the same thing. It's basically to stop what they perceive as powers preventing colonizers to have colonial life as uh, as a way of life. When they say we're defending our way of life, so they will defend colonialism, which is uh, uh, under threat by what they perceive to be the success of Russia and China. But what we're saying uh, as African internationalists, you know, the mode of production of you know, what the chairman has correctly summed up as colonialism has to go because how can you be an African seeing all this contradiction going around the world and you say it does not concern us when the whole world is built at our expense so you would take every opportunity uh, to advance the interests of our African people uh, basically the interests of African revolution since we already said over and over Africa African people everywhere, we cannot move qualitatively, which means be free people short of overturning colonialism as a mode of production. And uh, the Ukrainians are reminding that to us by taking African students as hostages. You all know about it. You're upset about it. So you should not be saying it's white people's question or anything like that because you saw those Africans, some of them we don't even know where they are. If they're still alive, we don't know. Why? Because there is no African black power on the world stage. And uh, the African neocolonialist president are part of the white power structures. You all know that. So you have to do something about it. So build the African Socialist International. They complete the Black Revolution in the 60s. That's what we should be discussing about. Let's be a powerful African nation. And this way, we can have a, a better way of saying things, you know, of intervening. So I appreciate that. Uh, that profound question. So, yeah. Uhura. Uhura. Uhura, Chairman. So um, we have about 10 minutes remaining for this study. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and do announcements at the very end, um, just to be able to utilize all the time. But just in terms of uh, some of the opposition that, you know, we've been seeing during this discussion uh, surrounding this question of why would the African People's Socialist Party, um, you know, stand in solidarity, align ourselves uh, with Russia, despite the fact that Russia is not, um, uh, you know, the, the Soviet Union, the, the socialist Russia. Um, and, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, clarify, I guess, our position on in support of Russia, in support, uh, if that is also um, equivalent to, you know, like, I don't know, in support of Putin and, you know, all this, all this stuff. So I just wanted um, for us to be able to, to speak to that because, you know, that is, um, like I said, some of the opposition that we've been getting up to now. And um, I have a pretty good idea about why that opposition is coming and what interests those uh, genuinely reflect. But I wanted to open that up to you. I just want to say in the first place uh, that uh, we have never uh, united with the assumption that the historical basis for uh, communism or socialism existed at the time in 1917 uh, when the Russian Revolution happened. 
Uh, I'm saying this because this is at the heart of, of one aspect of uh, what it is that you just raised. Uh, of what we saw happen uh, in Russia was not uh, the actual socialist revolution or communist revolution. It was uh, the historical basis didn't exist for that. Uh, but what happened in Russia in 1917 uh, was the political conditions arose where socialists seized power. And there's a difference there and that we don't have enough time in this few minutes to explain in a deep and profound way. But we can say that the historical basis for the rise of communism or socialism uh, is uh, revolves around the destruction of the colonial mode of production. And this is something that's got was missed all along when this assumption of capitalism somehow mysteriously appearing in the world and this great contest between industrialized white worker class and the industrial uh, uh, white ruling class. That's nonsense. All of that, as Karl Marx himself once said, uh, required uh, uh, as a pedestal uh, slavery pure and simple in the new world. In other words, uh, the colonial slavery, it was a condition for the existence of this contest between white workers and white bosses. So we never saw uh, what happened in 1917 uh, in Russia uh, as the communist revolution. Uh, it was an, a revolution that was made uh, by uh, communists who, uh, to, who were able to take power. There's a distinction there. So uh, that's the first thing. And I think that, uh, but what did happen was that it was an assault politically uh, uh, anyway, and, and, and creating whole new relations in the world and possibilities of uh, colonized people being able from that uh, vantage point, from what had happened in Russia, being able to participate in a struggle against the colonial powers of the world. And that's, that's, that, those were the so-called capitalists of the world. And, and that central to that was, was Russia uh, as a consequence of that revolution. And then of course the emergence of the Soviet bloc that came out of that there's a whole body of forces there of uh, that, uh, and then China uh, becoming a factor, and then Korea, all of these forces uh, becoming an, another block that challenged the existence of the social system of colonialism. Not that any of them were pure communists or pure socialist countries. Socialists have taken power, uh, and that changed the political terrain in the world. It gave, like, that's contributed to uh, what we were able to do in Kenya with Mau Mau, what we were able to do in other kinds of places because the US and the West were in this precarious uh, situation of being in political competition uh, with the Russians in part. And so Russia uh, became a factor that was important to us. And even despite the fact that I had some struggles even then with how Russia, Russian politic articulated itself even in Africa. But it was uh, something that uh, became uh, uh, an opponent of uh, raw, naked, white colonial power. And it continues to be that today. That's the war against Russia started then. It didn't start eight years ago in Ukraine. It started then. And they have been unrelenting in that war. And that war was, was one to keep Black people living under colonial domination from their perspective. And ours have to be against that. And so, yes, we align with Russia um, because, uh, 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 and, and, and you say we align with Putin. Does that mean Putin? It means Russia. It means Putin, the leadership in this, in this instance, in this struggle, yes. And, and, and to say that is the same thing as saying that we are not aligned with Joe Biden. It says that we are not aligned uh, 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 with the with the uh, president of uh, of France and, and 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 the prime minister of England. That's what it says. Uh, so to to throw Putin in because he's been characterized a certain way by the West as this this evil person. Uh, how the hell can you even open your mouth and say that uh, uh, when you say you know it, it, what you're doing is counterposing that against Biden. Whatever your 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 intent is, uh, is Putin and Biden who uh, and Zelensky, right? And so yeah, Putin, not Zelensky, Putin, not Biden, Putin, uh, 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 not the, the, these other forces that constitute the NATO uh, uh, operation gangsters. So yeah, and uh, uh, I, I just think it's important to recognize that this is. This is real, uh, and it's not just some 
a fairy tale that we are talking about. These are real powers in the world. And Africa has become the power in the world to protect its own interests. And it has to define its own interests. And in defining our own interests, we lined up with Putin against Biden. Real, real chairman. Well, I, I, mean, I really... Biden put a Biden put a hundred and fifty, a hundred thousand police in the streets with with Clintons mm -hmm. to kill black people, and there was no pre. Everybody knew that's what it was for. To kill black people, mm -hmm. and you're talking about, you know, how can we make this distinction? How yeah. can we not make this distinction? For real. Her chairman, he's been asking for, for more resources and more for more police in the in today. Yeah. And we, in the 1960s, you know what the FBI and the and the local police were saying about about Jomo, the organization that we were getting money from China. We they said we were getting money from China to do what to fight police killing us. They said we were getting money from China uh, to keep the white people from terrorizing us, from bombing our churches and doing this other kind. We were getting money from China. Well, hell, if the Chinese had been passing out money, we damn sure would have got the money because they, the US and, were the ones that was killing us. And they saying, you getting help from somebody else like that. Yes, they understand it, even if the person who raised this question uh, uh, through whatever platform here don't understand uh, the difference in 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 in, in Russia uh, and the United States. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you so much, Chairman. And um, since we are uh, towards the end of this discussion, I do just want to. Uh, we're going to go a couple of minutes over, um, but I'm sure everybody doesn't mind. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I want to just open um, the floor up uh, once more for Secretary General Louise Kinshasa, Director Tafari for closing remarks. Uh, then I'll go into announcements and then Chairman, I'll turn it over to you to wrap up the whole show. Yes, we will, Director Kiri. I'll just uh, <clears throat> say, because, you know, continuing what the Chairman said, uh, we, every African just has to ask basic questions, you know, very simple. Who killed Martin Luther King? Who killed uh, Patricia Mumba? Who killed Malcolm X? Who uh, destroyed UNIA and the government movement? Who attacked the Grenada Revolution? Who attacked the Cuban Revolution? Who killed Che Guevara? Who uh, imposed uh, daily humiliation on all black people on the planet? If you're being humiliated at the airport, wherever you are being humiliated at the workplace, it doesn't matter where you are. It's colonialism. It's basically the government presided over, or the mode of production presided over by the colonizers president, president of the U.S., the prime minister of Britain, the president of France, and so on. So it doesn't matter where you are. If we have no medicine hospital, we have no roads, if we're drinking dirty water, if there are what they call uh, tribal wars or civil wars in Africa, South Sudan, Somali, Congo, if there is uh, horizontal violence, violence in the street of New York, wherever we are, that's colonialism as a mode of production. So Africans don't even have to ask a question. Anytime anybody is in conflict against the leaders or the or the government or that mode of production, Africans should know where to stand. You know. So I just want to say that and I'll corner everybody to build uh, the uh, African People's Social Party so we can have a response, a proper response, because we have no government, we are stateless. So we go build our own single United States of Africa under the leadership of the African working class. That's basically will be a profound response to the crisis going on in Russia, in, uh, in Ukraine, and uh, everywhere around the world. Uh, Uhuru, no, I thank you, uh, I just want to hear what the SG has said and, uh, and what uh, Chairman Omali has, has been saying also. And um, yeah, I really want to encourage, you know, masses of African people to join in. Uh, you know, those who don't know, uh, we are not just, you know, talking about this. You know, um, this uh, in in this platform we have the leadership of the African Revolution. Chairman Omali, Chela S.G. Luezi, uh, the African People's Fearless Party has taken the responsibility, you know, to to lead the entire African nation, and we have seen that this is a, a responsible leadership. You know, we are. You know, responding to things that are happening in the whole world, because Africa does not exist in isolation. The whole world is interconnected. The whole social system 
It's one social system which, which was born from the attack on Africa and African people. And that's what has been stressed. So, you know, uh, right now we are busy organizing and preparing for the African Liberation Day, uh, which will take place in May. So I just want to encourage African people to, to jump in and, and, and participate in that. You know, we, it's, it's upon us to make this African revolution to happen, to make Africa what it's supposed to be. So I salute uh, Chairman Omali Teller and the entire you know, leadership of the African revolution and all the comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you so much, Secretary General of the Way to Kinshasa. Andrew. May I just say, yeah, briefly, uh, somebody, um, in, 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 in my closing uh, uh, statement, I'd like to say that uh, Kamran made a point, uh, uh, raised the question of whether or not uh, the so-called West is, is making uh, much, uh, how are making much of the, what they characterize as the inability or the ability of the Ukraine uh, military to like blunt the advance of the Russian forces. I don't know if that's true or not, by the way, that's what they put forward. Uh, but let's make no mistake about it. Uh, the, the, the Russians are not fighting uh, Ukraine. It's not in any Ukrainian. It, it, I remember hearing this discussion a long time ago. People would say, well, how can this minority, white people in South Africa control all that majority, black people? They say the same thing about the minority and what they call Rhodesia and, and other places. But the truth of the matter is that the African population in, uh, in South Africa never uh, fought a minority, a handful of white people in South, they were fighting to the whole white world. The fact is all the colonial powers on earth were united with that regime that fed them. They, they, uh, there was their economy, there was their military forces, there was their, whatever there, that's what, it wasn't just, just uh, some white people in South Africa. There wasn't just some white people in Rhodesia. It was white people in the whole world. It was the whole colonial capitalist system that Africans that had to deal with in South Africa and what they call Rhodesia. And the same thing is true with the issue of the so-called Ukrainians and whether they slowed the, the Russian military down. And I don't know if they did or not. I don't know how much of that is garbage propaganda. I don't know if it has anything to do with morality of the Russian troops not wanting to kill civilians because war is hell and people do get killed in wars and people, whether they're combatants or not, and in actual, um, the best of us, don't try to try to make war that does not uh, kill civilians. Not like the United States that dropped uh, two nuclear weapons uh, uh, on Japan, two bombs, uh, atomic bombs on Japan, on civilian population, killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Most of us try not to do that. So anybody who wants to talk about that, uh, uh, the the number of people being killed in Ukraine by Russians, uh, civilians, etc. They, 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 they have to um, also compare what the United States did just in Japan. If you just in Japan alone, in terms of those bombs that were dropped on civilians, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those were civilians that were bombed, thousands and thousands, you know, that happened. So that's nonsense. It's just, it's just bourgeois moral garbage that they, they put forth in that way, one and two, the Russian army is not fighting against you know, just some Ukrainian military. They're fighting against the whole, a whole white world, the whole NATO uh, force, all the guns, all the weapons that has started, as you heard from Comrade Alex when he was here earlier, much earlier than now. They were pumping reinforcements, got 100,000 forces that they created a battalion to go into the independent uh, uh, republics that have been created in eastern Ukraine. Uh, so that's, that's, I think it's really important for us to understand that. Second, uh, that uh, people, you Africans, uh, and everybody who believe in freedom, uh, we have a responsibility to, 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 to become free. And, and, and you can't, that's not something that's done by individuals or people who think you can be on the sidelines as spectators watching this process. We're in it. We're central to it. We are the key to the defeat of the whole colonial capitalist mode of production and the suffering, not only of black people, uh, but the peoples of the world. And so we have to take that on. And as comment, uh, 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 Tafari has just mentioned the African Liberation Day mobilizations that we're having all over the world in every region where Africans are located on earth, in Africa, in Europe, in 
uh, North America, in uh, the Caribbean and what have you, we are mobilizing African Liberation Days. These are not just some celebrations. These are the uh, mo uh, organizations, organizational efforts that will bring people into the party and that will also uh, help to complete the mission that Kwame Nkrumah attempted to do in 1963 uh, in Addis Ababa when the Organization of African Unity was founded. And then, of course, we are on our way uh, to, to completing this task with the 8th uh, Congress of the African People's Socialist Party that's going to be held when? It's going to be held in 2023 in South Africa. So Africans from throughout the world will be congregating in Johannesburg and South Africa 2023 uh, to consolidate our power as a people uh, who have been forcibly dispersed and separated from each other by artificial borders created by colonial powers, the same colonial powers that's now attacking Russia using Ukraine uh, as the weapon to do that, as the proxy in, to do that. So I think it's very important for us to understand that. Um, Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru Chairman, Uhuru Eshi Lawazi and Director Tafari. So we're going to go ahead and briefly just go through some of our announcements. I um, just want to announce two uh, upcoming conventions. If we could get that up on screen, please. <clears throat> Excellent. All right. So, um, <clears throat> well, coming up this, this upcoming weekend on March 18th to the 20th, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement will host its annual national convention titled Unity Through Reparations, Reparations Through Organization. Keynote presentations by Chairman Amalia Shetela and African People's Solidarity Committee Chairwoman Penny Hess will be given. This convention will win white people to understand that their responsibility, their interests, and their future is found in the revolutionary anti-colonial struggle for reparations to African people. The convention will kick off with a major bold political action at the St. Louis Arch on Friday, March 18th. The rest of the conference will be held online. For more information and to register, go to uhurusolidarity.org slash register. Next. The African National Women's Organization calls on Black women and our supporters to attend the Black Women's Convention happening towards the end of this month, month March 25th to 27th, 2022. The Black Women's Convention is an annual gathering of working class Black women who believe that colonial capitalism must be destroyed in order for African women to be free. This will be a virtual event. Visit convention.anwauhuru.org to register and more information. Next. Like and subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Omali Taught Me Sunday Study and donate to this show that is bringing this type of content, uh, such as this discussion on Russia and Ukraine. Donate to this important program at paypal.me slash Omali Taught Me. Next. And to keep up with all of our movement events, which there are uh, so many, you can visit theburningspear.com slash events and you can see everything that we've got going on throughout the Uhuru movement. So those will that will conclude the announcements, announcement portion um, uh, of the study today. And uh, Chairman Watt, I, I guess essentially you've just given your closing remarks. So I just really want to appreciate all of the panelists, the leadership of Chairman Amalia Shetela, appreciate African internationalism, this analysis, which you know may not, um, and I, I just really appreciate and salute the leadership of the party that holds the line firm, even when it's not the popular position. And that African internationalism and the work of our party is to make this position the popular position. The un this has to be the primary understanding um, that uh, African people have and that the rest of the world has around this question of Russia and Ukraine. So that means we have to build the African People's Socialist Party build the African revolution. And that means you have to join. So go to APSPuhuru.org um, to fill out our contact form to join the African revolution. Again, thank you all so much for your participation. Salute to uh, comrade um, Alex, who we heard from earlier today from the anti-globalization movement of Russia. Make sure to um, subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Omali Taught Me Sunday study. Uhuru comrades, Vanguard up. Vanguard up.